We did our meeting last Wednesday, and we agreed to reconvene today, here. Again, today we are starting on the uh, note, we are starting late. A lot of the government officials are in the National Assembly. And they uh, have all, uh, starting from the ministers, executive secretary, they made apologies. But I decided that instead of uh, postponing this meeting, let us uh, have it. And uh, because of the earlier information I have, exchange some documents which will help us in our discussion with our principal. You going back to your members and we will return him to our head of government and uh, if possible the Federal Executive Council. Therefore, I apologize for starting late and welcome you. And uh, I have to make apologies. My Minister of State is an official duties outside Abuja and um, is due back tomorrow. The Permanent Secretary is the same, but he will join us at a much later stage. So with this few remarks, I welcome you here for the social dialogue which we are supposed to have for today. We have an agenda which have been circulated and uh, we will take off from uh, the agenda and do justice to it. Overall, our intention and our aim for all of us here is for us to get this uh, strike to an end. We, we, we have to get the strike to an end so that uh, you resume your work and the students will uh, benefit from uh, uh, the teaching you have for them as their lecturers. So I welcome you and uh, President of ASU, if you have uh, any opening remarks, very glad to pass on the microphone to you. Thank you very much. Also, it's equally pleased to be here today. As a, a rule, we also believe in the principle that is driving this process. We are interested in quick resolution of the crisis. And we believe that as soon as uh, all required actions are taken. Our members are willing and ready to fully resume at their duty posts. We don't enjoy staying out of our work. We love what we are doing and we want to continue to do so without any let or hindrance. So we thank the Honorable Minister for making this meeting possible. Our members are expectant and we strongly hope that at the end of this meeting we have something positive to take back to them beyond what we have been given so far by government. Once again, we thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. We will try as much as possible <clears throat> to address every issue that is outstanding. We want to see if we can take them at the root and solve them and solve them on a permanent basis. We also ask you in the spirit of some other meetings that are taking place in between the last adjourned date and now to see how you can uh, 
with the government side on the uh, middle of the road course, so to say, so that we can make progress. If we don't do that, then that's a spirit of give and take. If we don't do that, then these children or uh, your students will continue to be at home. And like I said the last time, some um, people found the students at home are very easy recruits during the NSAS protest. And Sorry, Honorable Minister, sir. Yeah. Are we starting this meeting or we are still going back to opening remarks? No, we are, we are, starting, we are going to start the meeting. Why I'm saying that? With the journalists here. No, they will leave now. Journalists, uh, we are entering the business session. So you have to give us um, some minutes. But um, uh, we will get back to you. We will call you back as soon as possible. We don't have to come to tell Nigerians what you have achieved today. So we've just continued from where we stopped, but there is nothing new. There is nothing new. There is nothing new. Thank you. Why is it reoccurring? This situation reoccurring. It's reoccurring because uh, <clears throat> it's um, a negotiation meeting, and uh, negotiation people come with their demands, uh, various uh, demands. If it's between employer and uh, employee, the employer will look at uh, the demands and uh, do what we call counter-offer. So the federal government counter-offers were taken back by ASU to their neck. And so they reported back. Uh, the federal government side wasn't complete today. The Minister of Finance is not here. Jakantanjara is not here. Education Minister is not here. So we could not effectively uh, address the issues or, or, or counter offer them. So we are having a government side meeting on Friday so that we look at uh, all the other issues that have not been addressed. Three issues. Three issues. One is the revitalization fund, where government offered as to 20 billion as a sign of uh, good faith that the MOU that I entered into with uh, the government in 2013, as a result of the negotiation of the agreement they had with the uh, government in 2009 that this present government is still committed to it. And that is why we have uh, given them offers of uh, some funds to help in revitalization. This government is not against revitalization of the universities, but this government says that because of the economic situation, the economic situation, because of COVID affliction, we cannot really pay you the 110 billion we they are demanding for revitalization. They offered 20 billion. On uh, end academic allowances, the government offered 30 billion to all the unions and universities, making 50 billion altogether if you add it with uh, 20 billion on uh, revitalization. ASU is saying that the 30 billion should belong to ASU alone. Irrespective of that there are three other unions, there are smaller unions though, but that was uh, the strength that was taken into account before government offered the 30 billion. So there is a, a little problem there because government says we don't have any other money to offer apart from the 30 billion so for an academic allowance. 
Yes, Again, the other cardinal issue is the 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 Utahns versus IPs. Today, ASU submitted their documents on Utahns for onward transmission to the National Information Technology Development Agency (NIDA). As you well know, last week the Minister of Communications, that said uh, Communications and Digital Economy, had approved that NIDA get their system and subject that to in integrity test. And that this test will be conducted with a few of favor and as early as possible. So today they have submitted some of the documents for onward transmission. One of the other problems that have arisen is the transition period. How do you get paid? The end academic allowances that is due to you, and any other payment that government might deem fit to make to you. They want an exemption from IPs. Government side, represented by Accountant General of the Federation, says that they have that platform as the only means of payments. So that's where we are. And so we are all going back. They are going back to their people. But they will receive our, uh, uh, from, uh, from the government side, they will receive via me uh, what you can call uh, the last uh, irreducible offers of government. So that's the situation. So when is the next meeting? We don't have a date for the next meeting because. As I said earlier, the government side will meet on Friday. And after Friday, we'll communicate as soon. And in communicating them, if there is need for a meeting, we'll take into account uh, their own uh, commitments in terms of uh, previous commitments and appointments. Okay, sir. So, so, so offers have been made in terms of monetary terms, talking about 30 billion or 50 billion. Yes. For analysis and. Uh, for an, for an end allowances in the university um, system. Okay, sir. Are there confirmation for payment for now from ASU? Or has government started here? The government has processed the 30 billion and is ready for payment into the university system. The only snack there now is that ASU now says this 30 billion is for us alone. It doesn't involve non academic staff, union members, NASU. It doesn't involve SANU, senior staff in universities. It doesn't involve technologists in universities under NAHAT, National Association of Technological uh, uh, Workers in the university. So that is the, the new snag. Otherwise, the money had, was processed last week because it was uh, in the offer given to them, it was to have been paid on or before 6th of November. Uh, the Honourable Minister, the agitation is still on by students uh, beginning to return to campus. And the space of this negotiation is taking a long period beyond people's expectation. If as by next meeting, they insisted on uh, the UTA, which they have just submitted the model mm. for testing, mm -hmm. what will be the position of the federal government will lead the... I, I won't know what the uh, uh, position of the federal government will be. But I know that the uh, uh, federal government is represented by the chief executive of the federation, the president, who Nigerians voted for as their chief executive, has said that anybody, any staff on federal government payroll who is not on uh, the IP's platform should stop receiving salaries. That is the only thing I know. So if there is any uh, amendment to that pronouncement, it should also come from uh, that chief executive, okay, so not from me. Okay, so there is this argument out there that uh, um, there are other government corporations that are not also on the IPP, IPIS, and that is one of the reasons why uh, ASU had been very adamant all along. Asu over time had mentioned NMPC, PPMC, and other corporations, and that, that why is it that government is forcing IPPS on them and not 
uh, asking other corporations to uh, also impact their device uh, uh, technology? Government corporations that are not on federal government payroll, federal government budget lines, are not uh, uh, to be forced. Like you mentioned NMPC, or you mentioned Central Bank. They, are, they, 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 they run their own financial system, and they are not on uh, uh, federal government budget. The federal government budgets money under education to pay the university system, their workers, and even members of their governing board. Everybody is paid by the federal government through that budget, budget on their education. So government wants to block all the leakages associated with the humongous rise in a, a personnel a system, especially personnel fund. If you remember the federal budget, about 80% is now on recurrent, out of which uh, you come to that recurrent expenditure. Uh, personnel cost takes uh, more than 60%. So there's nothing to cheer about. So government has laid out plans to block leakages and to make sure that there's transparency in terms of expenditure of uh, government uh, funds. Thank you, there is no gain saying the fact that even under international laws and Nigerian laws, an employer's business must be allowed to thrive. Workers or employees do not dictate to their employers how they will be paid their emoluments. The only thing there is that your emolument should be paid as and when due. If that is not done, then there's a breach of the labor laws of uh, the country and uh, even the ILO convention. Sorry, sir. Uh, this is a question. Who, what, uh, what is the sanction for this kind of breach? Which breach? There's a breach of if the employer employed mm. an employer, a, a worker. Mm -hmm. The worker is insisting, like us is insisting, of the model of payment. Mm. What section? It is wrong. Is? It is wrong. It is wrong. It is wrong. And what the employer should do is to make them understand that it is wrong. That is the first line. And negotiate with them. That's what we are doing. That is the first line. If uh, they, uh, they, they continue to insist and fall out of line, the government can take them to the next line of arbitration, either to the, uh, to the industrial arbitration panel, which is created in the Trade Disputes Act of the country, as the next line after the conciliation by the Honorable Minister of Labor and Employment, or even go to the National Industrial Court and subject uh, the matters there for adjudication and uh, for the courts to look into it and give their, their judgment and orders where necessary. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir.